Hi everyone. In this uh, demo, I walk through a simple uh, policy forwarding application uh, that I wrote in Python on top of uh, Open Daylight. Um, to start with, uh, let's first you know, start the Open Daylight controller. Take around 30 seconds to get started. The first thing we want to do here is uh, stop the simple forwarding application that uh, comes along with the controller. Uh, the reason we want to do it is uh, since this is a custom forwarding application, we don't want to rely on the uh, the simple forwarding uh, that is coming along with the controller. So to do that, uh, first thing what we do is search uh, for the, the word bundle number associated with the simple forwarding app and then stop it. Make sure that it really is stopped. Yeah, the truth is stopped. The next step is we start the uh, the mininet application. So to do that, uh, so this is, we have a custom topology that is uh, specified, um, and this is a kind of a three-node topology with three holes that we can see that here, and this automatically connects to the uh, controller that is learning on the local host. At this point, the topology should be discovered in the web interface. So we go to the controller, so we see the three node topology, and we should not be seeing any flows installed uh, that we can verify here. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to enable the proactive mode instead of the reactive mode of the, uh, instead of the default reactive mode. So for that, we select the proactive mode for all the hosts. So when we select the proactive mode, when there is no matching flow in each of the host, uh, the packets get dropped. In the reactive mode, the packets get forwarded to the controller. Now we look at the flows that are getting installed. There will be three flows installed for each of the nodes. The first two are the ARP and the LLDP thing. LLDP is necessary for topology discovery. The ARP is necessary for discovering the host. And the last is the default drop entry that gets installed. The hosts are still not discovered. So to discover the host, what we can do is we can trigger the, trigger the ping from the uh, the thing is going to fail because currently we have enabled proactive mode and there are no flows installed. So the ping packets are going to get dropped. So the from H1 H3. Basically, this would send the ARP from the host and this basically would get the host discovered in the topology. We go back to the controller and now we see the hosts that are getting discovered. So, yeah. so, so these are the three switches and these are the three hosts. Now the hosts have got discovered in the top. So now we have not started the uh, custom policy forwarding app. So that's the next step we will get started. So before that, I want to you know, quickly show you the the, the small uh, Python SDK library that I have written, which I am also using it in my application. So for some of the common tasks, you know, this is the key library. For example, at this point, I can see what are the that I've got installed. So these are the, you know, the flows that we already saw earlier. Uh, so those are the ones that are present. So first, we'll start the, the policy forwarding app. Uh, here, it discovers the, you know, the three nodes and it discovers all the edges. So first step we want to do is select between which two nodes we want to apply the policy. Let's say we select between node one and node two, and it gives multiple choices. So currently there are around three types of policy-based uh, you know, application types that I have uh, written. The first, based on the traffic type, is the first one. And there are two choices here: one is the cost-based and TCP, and the layer four type-based. So let's select the cost-based, you know, policy. So now we will look at the flows that I've got installed using the, uh, the SDK library. And we see that these are the flows that have got installed now. The first two flows are the host-based flows to reach uh, these two uh, you know, hosts. And the next set of four flows are for cause one, which takes this path one, three, two. And that's what is you know the one indicates here, the, the toss bits. And the next two flows are for with cause zero, which uses the path node one to node two. 
can look at the flows either using the uh, you know using our library or we can also go to the controller and we can do the troubleshoot tab we can click on the flows and we can see the flows you know here as well actually now to test this whole application what we do is we go to the mini net and in mini net allows you know a ping test with you know a specific cost value what we will do is we start with h1 with cost zero and if, let's say with the count of five we can develop point zero two in the correct mode to host two and before that what we'll do is we'll go to wireshark and we'll start the capture on let's say on s2 e1 interface we'll start at the capture and we'll go back to minute first we will do with you know the cause zero and cause zero according to it is going to take this path which is h1 h2 okay the ping works fine we go to wireshark and see that we see the ping packets getting captured now what we will do is we'll go back to mini net and instead of cause zero let's try cause seven and we'll go back to wireshark and say restart here and we'll go here to mini net and Thing works fine, but here since we selected seven, it's going to use this path one three two. So we expect the Wireshark to not capture these packets. As expected, Wireshark did not capture the packets. So that basically proves that the flows have been installed and they are working as expected. Okay, so now that we have verified the first policy based for it works fine, let's clean up the uh, you know the flows. For that we use again the SDK library. Clean up the select option thirteen, which deletes all the flows. Can see the flows listed now. None of the flows have been installed as present. So we go back to the policy forwarding apps. We start that. We select the same two nodes. Um, and now what we do is instead of selecting cost based, let's select you know layer four based, which is TCP UDP based. Now we we'll go back to the library, look at the flows. What we'll see now is difference from before is now we see these four flows which has the type as UDP, which is using this path 132, and the next two flows that got installed, which is of type TCP, which uses this path 12. Test this particular mode, we go back to Wireshark again, and we do a restart of that, and we go back to MiniNet, and MiniNet provides uh, two performance based tests, you know, they are called as IPERF and IPERF UDP. Um, so one is a TCP based test and another is a UDP based test. So what we'll do is uh, first we we'll do an IPERF H1 to H2, which basically uses the TCP mode. And uh, we'll do this test. And basically that is going to use this path one two. And that should get captured in Wireshark. And it did get captured in Wireshark. And here the link speed is 10 Mbps because we have chosen the link speed in the custom topology which between H1 and H2 as 10 Mbps. So that's kind of expected. Now, what we do is again go back to Wireshark and we uh, restart this, go back to MiniNet, and now we'll do a UDP test. So, we'll select UDP. Uh, UDP test between H1 and H2. Now, what we should see is we should not see any packets captured in Wireshark. So that's kind of expected. Other additional thing we see is now the uh, the performance is much higher, 62 Mbps. That's because it is choosing this path 132, and the link speed between 13 and 32 is much higher, and that's why the performance number we get is much higher. So basically, this proves the you know the layer four based uh, policy app. Next, I will de demo the uh, the time of day based policy. First, to start that as usual, we delete all the flows. Uh, then we start our policy forwarding app. Then we select the same two nodes. Select the time of the day based app. So what initially to start with, it selects a policy uh, for reaching one and two. It says it sets a policy between one, three, and two. The nodes one, three, and two. So we go back and see the flows, and we see uh, the flows that have got installed is to between the path 132. So that has got installed. 
now let's say if I do my for text of h1 and h2, I would see a band around this you know higher range, which is because these link speed are you know much higher. Now after some time it has switched between the path one two. Now if I see the flows that I've got installed, uh, I I would see the flows for this path, which is one two, and that's kind of what this indicates. Now, if I select the same type of test, I would see since the link speed between 1 and 2 is around 10 Mbps, uh, I would see the performance log lesser, which is around you know 9 to 10 Mbps. That's kind of what it says. And that proves basically that uh, the flows that are installed for the particular path based on the particular time of the day works as expected. The last thing that we'll try is the, the bandwidth based policy. So, again, we go back, clean up the flows. And then we start our uh, app. Now here, what we will again select the same two nodes. The bandwidth-based policy. We fix up the path, which is one, three, two, and we see the flows here. And that's again, you know, it's the path for one, three, two. And at this point, if we do a, a test, basically, it's going to say. Uh, since it's cho chosen the 132 path, the uh, bandwidth is going to be much higher than 10 Mbps. So that is kind of expected. But we also see one more thing. Uh, since we have set a bandwidth based policy, in the program I have set a bandwidth threshold of around 1000 bytes per second. So as soon as we did this test, the, it has switched to the backup path. And that's kind of what it says here. It has switched to the path 1, 2. Um, and it's a space, it's switching to you know backup path one two. And here, when I see the flows here, I would see basically uh, the uh, path for one two actually. So now, if I do the performance test, uh, I would see a lot lower number, which is around the uh, the ten Mbps number. And that's what it says here. So basically, this is the particular policy based on the bandwidth. Uh, we, uh, if the bandwidth threshold is reached, we switch to the uh, backup path. Um, so basically, this is the you know the whole you know sort of set of policy based um, uh, types that we have installed. And actually, this can be extended to add more policies as we 